Well, welcome to the journey. My name is Kevin Polkey. And uh, this particular uh, episode for the journey is going back to uh, reflection on um, just my my current experience that I'm going on. It, it is uh, it's November. We're coming to uh, coming to the end of November, which then leads to uh, that holiday that we at least here in America that we celebrate um, of Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving and the month of November has always been one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, I think there's for a combination of different reasons. I mean, we can, it could be uh, that it's fall and at the beginning of November, end of October, all the leaves are changing. And then by the end of November, um, there is this a crispness and a coolness in the air and and just as I was out walking um, the dog uh, yesterday morning, there's a stillness that comes and you can see now with the leaves down on the ground, you can see things that you couldn't see before. So this combination within a matter of a couple of weeks, this beautiful colors of, of what was uh, cloaked under a green uh, covering you have all these beautiful reds and yellows and oranges, uh, different shades of those colors as well. And then within a short time period, um, when the weather gets colder, those leaves drop and then you, you see um, what all that covering uh, was, was blocking, um, what was not allowing us to see. So maybe it's that, maybe it's the fact that we're in the midst of uh, football season, both college, uh, high school seasons are wrapping up and going into the state playoffs, uh, professional football as well on its way. Uh, maybe it's that. Um, maybe it's, it's a time to get together with family and friends, and we're transitioning uh, into that, uh, the beginning of the holiday season. Um, maybe that's part of it as well. Um, I, I enjoy spending time with my family uh, and friends, uh, just having conversations. Um, and so all those different aspects makes uh, Thanksgiving um, and in the month of November, um, something that I look forward to every year, as well as I uh, hold, hold dear because of, of what uh, comes in the month of November. But like many things in life, um, November also is represent, representative in my life of certain uh, setbacks. Um, I remember uh, 1977, uh, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, um, we were at our family, uh, my, my dad's side, family farm. And uh, we were outside helping um, my dad and I were helping my uncles uh, put uh, covering around uh, the farm, the farmhouse to prepare it for winter. And then we heard a scream from inside the house and we went inside and as I went past the kitchen, I got shuffled up to one of the upper bedrooms uh, and later um, found out that my grandfather had died um, that night, um, had collapsed in the kitchen. A few years later, I was a freshman in college and uh, a, a freshman in college, and I get it, uh, a friend of mine had reached out to me. We were out the night before Thanksgiving, like many of us would do, and he had reached out to me, wanted to get together and um, never told him I would and ended up not ever connecting with him. He went back to school and got a phone call the following Tuesday that he had died as a result of suicide. When my son was six months old, um, the Monday before Thanksgiving, and that would have been in 2000, um, 2016, um, I get called and my wife, Diane, is being rushed to the hospital because she's bleeding, um, bleeding out and didn't know why the bleeding was happening. She lost uh, many uh, pints of blood at that point. 
Um, I just remember uh, holding Caleb, um, my son, who was, like I said, just six months and being scared to death that what was going on with Diane, is she going to be able to make it out of the hospital? Is she going to be able to make it? Um, she, she did get discharged uh, on Thanksgiving day that year. Um, but again, I remember the following year uh, being nervous or concerned because of those four days that we had spent not knowing how she was going to be, what was wrong with her. Even then, after she got discharged, we still didn't know for sure what had happened. So there's been a series of different things that have happened. Um, earlier this uh, earlier this month, um, my dad uh, died as a result of uh, of eleven months of having cancer. And again, uh, that's how this month of November started off. And I just found out just recently a good friend of ours. Uh, in, in our family, uh, found out that their head house had burned down and was totally lost as a result of the fire. See, I think that is how life is. November and Thanksgiving and the fall are still the favorite time of the year for me. But that doesn't come without... Um, the reality of loss and setbacks, tragedy and, and fear. I recently was talking about uh, talking about my dad and um, and obviously is, is you have a family member that's going through uh, a, a terminal illness, there's a lot of reflection and I was, I was definitely um, doing that. My my father growing up uh, was was an athlete and he played um, football in high school. He had come to the point where he was honored at being uh, all conference and all state at being an offensive lineman, a center. That in 1962 led to him being recruited by some of the top Division One schools in the in the Midwest. He ended up deciding to play at Iowa State, played there for two years. As a result of an injury, he, in that scholarship that he had was conditional. Uh, he ended up leaving Iowa State and returning uh, to Southern Wisconsin, and then later married my mom and, and moved to uh, Rockford area. He got, worked in the trades as a, as a, a licensed electrician, a maintenance uh, electrician. Being able to fix just about anything in my mind, he was physically, naturally strong, always walked. It was hard to keep up with him because he walked so fast. I remember as I got older and my dad aged because of an injury that he had at work, um, rupturing his quadricep tendon in his right leg, ironically, that's the same leg that I did four years ago, just how it happened was different. That uh, his ability to move around was not, uh, was greatly getting reduced and became more and more limited over time. First walking with a cane and then with a walker and then for a time period, unable to walk at all. I remember the time when he got his first electric wheelchair. There was this love-hate with that chair. There was a hate for why he had to use the chair. Because he wasn't. Uh, the athlete, the, the, the physical uh, ability that he had earlier in his life. And now this chair allowed him to be mobile once again. For anybody that ever uh, 
<laughs> came across him. He was uh, he, as fast as he walked when he was walking. He was even faster now in the wheelchair. Um, and he didn't, uh, he should have had a, uh, some type of uh, uh, speed limit with that. But, um, but, but the chair allowed him to be mobile again, which then allowed him to do some of his favorite things, which was socializing, see family and friends and go with my mom. They went on many trips uh, as a result of being able to have that, have that chair that they weren't uh, able to do prior to the chair because of my lack, my father's lack of mobility. See, I hated that chair, but was grateful for that chair. They say that the greatest antidote to stress is a heart of gratitude. How do you have gratitude in the midst of grief and loss? it will definitely take more intentional effort. That in every setback and loss that we can maybe find, if we seek it, can find something that we can be grateful for. That's not to take away from going down into the depth of the grief and the sadness and the loss, because it's important that we do that as well as we maintain one, one foot or one hand or one finger on gratitude. To be able to choose to be grateful in the midst of setback and loss and grief allows us to keep things within a balance. Nature shows us, reveals to us that there is always that balance that there's always this time period for fall, which leads into the winter where certain animals will hibernate. The trees will, will drop their leaves and prepare for the winter. And then at some point, we'll begin spring again and summer and then fall and they will return to winter. That there is this, this dynamic, this paradox of, of loss, but knowing that we also need to keep one foot in gratefulness and gratitude. Not one overshadowing the other to diminish the other, that there is a relationship between the two and that we need to be mindful of that relationship. And that does not mean that it's gonna be easy, that does not mean that it's not going to be without effort and presence of mind. You can have someone who's gone on this journey before give you some suggestions of what to possibly look for. Um, but at the end of the day, it is your individualized journey. To be able to seek to be present and not get lost in our thoughts projecting too far into the future or getting stuck on a certain narrative from the past. Being able to live within the tension of loss as well as gratitude. This is, your, this is the invitation that I would invite you into that regardless of the circumstances of Thanksgiving for you, regardless of the circumstances of what and who you are with, you can choose if you're in a room full of people or just with one other person or even by yourself to make a list of what you're grateful for as well as acknowledging those pain points. Again, as always, thank you so much for, uh, for listening and for being here. If someone that you know may need to hear this, um, please share it um, and please comment. Um, again, thank you very much, and I will look forward to seeing you next week.